Hi, this is Josh with Retro TV One Tech, and today we're going to be doing a little troubleshooting with my newly installed Sound Blaster 2.0 sound card and my Tandy 1000 TL2. Right now we're having a little bit of an issue where there's a conflict between the Sound Blaster and the Tandy sound. And so they're trying to use the same DMA channel. We've got the IRQs fixed. The IRQ is like an interrupt request that in the memory where how the processor communicates with the actual um, sound card itself. And so the IRQs are separate. Um, actually, the Tandy sound uses IRQ7, and I've got the Sound Blaster configured to use IRQ5, so that's not conflicting. But the DMA, uh, which is direct memory access, is on channel 1 for both of them, and that's conflicting. So I'll show you what that's doing. All right, so I don't have my mouse connected over here, but if I load up the Tandy Sound app on Deathmate, I can load up a sound on the Tandy DAC, and it will usually hang the system when I try and play it. So let's just load up um, bells. It's just a simple sound effect. It's gonna load it up. It will even show the sound wave just fine. Everything looks great, but when I actually try and play it, it will just hang the system because it'll have that conflict and it won't know what to do. So we're gonna just play the entire thing and see what happens. And it will lock the system up and we'll have to reset it. Yep. All right, so there you go. You can hear that it did not play anything. And now when I push any buttons, system's locked and now it's starting to beep. So the only way to fix that is to either do the control alt delete or the reset. It does the same thing every time you try and access anything uh, using the Tandy DAC or the Tandy digital analog converter uh, system or chip. So what I need to do is try and change a couple settings on the Sound Blaster card itself. There's some jumpers I can change over here to see if I can get it to work. One thing um, that I can do, there's a DMA sharing jumper over here that I want to try and change. Um, and I'll see if it will share the DMA with the Tandy DAC. Or the other thing I can do is just disable the DAC on the Sound Blaster and just use it kind of as an ad lib with a joystick by removing one of the other jumpers. So we're going to try both of those things and see which one works best. Before we do anything, I definitely want to show you um, a schematic of the Sound Blaster 2.0 or CT1350B card and show you which jumper I'm changing. But basically, it's this one right here. And we should be able to uh, move that jumper over to the left one pin, and it should enable DMA sharing. But I'll show you that uh, schematic here. All right, so here we go. So I'm just going to remove this jumper from this side and just move it over and see if that helps at all. It might not, but definitely not going to hurt anything one way or the other. All right, so I've got that switched over. So now my free pin is on the right instead of on the left where it was before. So let's boot the system and see what happens. All right, here we go. Everything's booting up correctly. That's good. No weird issues there. Okay, so now let's go over and we're going to try. Actually, before we do that, I'm going to go out to DOS and just make sure the sound blaster is set correctly. So I'm going to say set blaster equals A220. I5 and D1, and that should be the, D, the DMA sharing. Unfortunately, these older sound blasters are only capable of using DMA1, and the Tandy, the Tandy DAC chip is also hardwired to DMA1, so there's really no way to change either one of those. All right, so. Let's see what happens now. Go over here and load the sound. Let's see if it plays. All right, we're going to open bell sound effect. And just like before, it should open it just fine. There should be no issue with that. But let's see if it will actually play it and not hang the system. All right, fingers crossed. 
Yes, oh my goodness, it worked. <laughs> Woo, that's a problem I've been worried about for a long time. That's amazing. So I can have both worlds, the best of both worlds. Yay. It's like sounds like the Taco Bell uh, chime as well, doesn't it? All right, so I'm gonna try one more thing. Let me exit out of this. I wanna try the music uh, app over here and see if that works. You can see my monitor does get a little yellowing on it for some reason um, as, as the screen's on for a while. I'm not really sure why. But that's okay. I do have an extra monitor if this one goes bad, but I'm hoping it lasts for a while. All right, so let's load the music app here. I say app, program, software, whatever. <laughs> when this computer was out, nobody ever thought about apps. But my goodness, I can't believe it was literally just changing that one uh, jumper. That's amazing. I can't believe both of these work. All right, so we're going to try uh, Pachelbel's Canon in D, and we'll see if we can get this to work here. Here we go. All right, here we go. It might take a little bit to load it. The song is really long, so it really does take a while. It works! <laughs> this was hanging the system before. It was locking up the entire system. Who would have thought just changing one jumper changes everything? Listen to that. And this is coming out of this speaker over here. Wow. And these are all digital sound effects. Amazing. Well, the name of this video is Troubleshooting, but we didn't have to do a lot of troubleshooting. Literally, the first thing we tried worked. When does that happen? All right, so the next test is to see if all the Sound Blaster stuff still works. So this, the Tandy stuff works. Let's see if the Sound Blaster stuff still works. So I'm just going to try an AdLib thing first. Uh, let's try the AdLib jukebox just to make sure the FM chip works. I'm not as concerned about the Sound Blaster DAC. I really just wanted the AdLib... Uh, FM synth, which is on both the Sound Blaster and the um, AdLib card, of course. Now, I've not got speakers hooked up, so I'll have to um, put my headphones close to the uh, camera here so you can hear it, but we'll see if the AdLib still works. So here we go. Yep. Awesome. It works. Yay! All right, now we're going to try Prince of Persia and see if that'll work uh, with the Sound Blaster here. Yep. There you go. Awesome. Let's see if the uh, digital sound effects will work. I'll put the proper speakers on later, but yep. You can hear the footsteps and all that. That's digital sound blaster sound. Cool. All right, one more thing I want to try. I am so excited that I fixed it. I'm going to try playing a mod file. Now, I know the mod files work fine on the uh, sound blaster. I've already done that before. Uh, it's really cool to have this mod tracker program here. Everything's good. It looks like it detected. So you can see there it detected the Tandy DAC. It detected the OPL2, which is the AdLib chip. It detected the Sound Blaster and all of those things. So I'm going to, right now it's set to output to the Sound Blaster, as you can see. I'm going to change the output to Tandy DAC. I've done it with the speaker. Let me turn the frequency down just a little bit. I don't know if the Tandy DAC can handle that or not, but we'll go ahead and just do try uh, like 20,000 or so. All right. So, so we're going to do Tandy DAC, and we're going to see if we can load this, one of these mod files here a little bit. It works on the PC speaker, but I couldn't get it to work on the Tandy DAC before, so let's see what happens. Yes! So cool this old computer can do this. Sounds amazing! Anybody remember Future Crew? They made all these amazing demos. I think they were from Sweden, maybe? I'm not sure. 
Really cool stuff. And Purple Motion there, he was their composer, I believe. Really clear sound, too. Wow. Uh, you can see, too, if I change to PC speaker, uh, which is crazy that this can even be done on a PC speaker, but the sound is not nearly as good if I change to PC speaker, I don't think, at least. It's using the same speaker, but it's using a different um, system in the computer itself to get it to run. Yeah, you can hear it's kind of noisy. Yeah, so anyway, definitely way better on the, uh, the Tandy DAC or the Sound Blaster. So, amazing. I'm going to get it hooked up, and I'll show you what it sounds like with the speakers and everything plugged in the way it's supposed to be. But, wow. So we have a fully working system right now. We just upgraded the RAM a little earlier today, and uh, everything in the graphics works. And now we have this um, amazing Sound Blaster Tandy DAC combo. So it's basically like the perfect system, which I've been trying to uh, achieve here for a few weeks this summer. So I'm over the moon. It's amazing. All right, we've got the computer set up where it goes on the desk. And now we're going to try the mod tracker one more time. Mod Master XT, such a great little program here. And we're going to try it again with the Tandy DAC, and then we'll try it with the Sound Blaster. They both sound amazing, but I'm just I'm glad that I can use both now in games and everything else. So here it is on the Tandy DAC one more time. It'll be a little soft, but it'll still work. Perfect. Really clear. So you heard that already, so let's go and let's try the Sound Blaster one now. And the Sound Blaster, of course, sounds better. I actually had the Sound Blaster. Well, here, let's do it about the same frequency just for uh, an even comparison. I had it like at 29,000, but let's see what happens. Sound Blaster. There it goes. Of course, these are better speakers, too. Nice. So there you go. All right, one more thing I want to try is OutRun, because OutRun would not work with the Sound Blaster in because it needs the Tandy DAC, and it would see the Tandy DAC was there, it would try to use it, and it would lock up the game. So OutRun would not work before we fix this. And now it seems to be working, so we're going to go Tandy... 16 color. Sega Computer Software presents. There you go. Outrun. That's pretty cool. So use that the Tandy DAC to have the uh, audio on there. So this one doesn't even have Sound Blaster compatibility. It's just Tandy. So yeah, now this works too. Before I couldn't even play this game. Unless you pick your song here. It's pretty cool. So that's the Tandy 3 voice sound, and then the Tandy DAC is the uh, the digital sound that you hear. So it's loading. Let's see what happens. Now you hear the tire squealing sound effect. And the engine noises are even really realistic so cool. It's actually pretty loud. I can probably turn it down a little bit. It's pretty cool. The speaker's got plenty of power to do that. Alright, let's see if I can do the joystick. I wonder if it's Control-J or something. Let me see. Yeah, hey, joystick. Okay, Control-J. So here we go. So I'm just going to calibrate it by moving it to all the boxes to see where the limits are. So you got to move it to all the boxes and then, uh, then let it center. Okay, good. Uh, and then you're going to push the button. Cool. So now I'm doing the joystick. Yay! That's so much better. So you have to push up to go, not the uh, not the uh, 
any of the buttons to do the throttle. I'm not sure if the buttons do anything. Maybe... Okay, so maybe the buttons do a, uh, the brakes. Oh, that's weird. Oh, no, I see. The buttons do shifting, maybe. Oops, I'm crashing. <laughs> All right, let's try again. Oh, it's like so much faster here. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's why I couldn't win before, because I wasn't going fast enough. There's a lot of squealing tires here. Oh, I crashed. I don't think there was so much traffic last time. All right, everybody. Well, that's all for now for this Tandy Sound Blaster troubleshooting video. We hope you enjoyed the video. Super fun to make this and so glad that it finally works now. Uh, it's just something that I've been trying to do for a long time and certainly uh, really, really just exciting to have something like that work. And especially when I've read online so many places that it just can't be done. I literally read online, you can't have a Tandy DAC and a Sound Blaster at the same time. It just won't work. And somehow, just through trial and error and a little more research, I've found a way to make it work. So that's extremely satisfying. One of the way, one of the reasons why I enjoy retro computers so much is just that thrill of figuring something out, stretching the limits, making something work that wasn't really supposed to work or wasn't uh, something that a lot of people said couldn't work. So just super cool to be able to have that success and have that moment of uh, triumph. So thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, definitely subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and uh, look forward to a lot more for Septandy coming up soon. I actually filmed this video in the summer, but uh, ended up saving it for Septandy, which is a really cool collaborative effort by a lot of YouTubers in the retro computing space to highlight all things Tandy and celebrate all things Tandy in the month of September. So happy Septandy, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you next time. So for now, enjoy that tech and keep it retro.